Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Rob Unscripted. I am Rob Cohey, Industry Solution Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing, and today we're going to talk about the convergence of BIM, that's Building Information Modeling, and Digital Prototyping. Now, we're going to go through a series of PowerPoints, and oh, I know, everybody's going to complain about this, but, you know, until I get some some help on uh, you know, converting some of these into a more interactive flash base, um, we're going to do so, but, you know, before we get to that, the chances of me getting help are either slim and none. And since we're using PowerPoint, looks like the slims have it. Um, so maybe sometime in the future we'll see a, a, fl a more flash-based uh, presentation here. <laughs> but in all reality, let's get right into it. Building information modeling. What is building information modeling from a manufacturing point of view? And this is this whole presentation is going to be geared more toward. Uh, the manufacturer and understanding BIM um, from uh, from an aspect of I have people I have customers asking me for BIM content and uh, I'd, sure, a, I'd sure like to know what BIM is and secondly how do I achieve that so before we get there let's talk a little bit about building information modeling and it's an integrated process allowing professionals uh, typically architectural engineering construction professionals to explore a project's characteristics digitally before it's ever built to allow them to design, visualize, simulate, document, and ultimately deliver a project. Now let's compare and contrast that to digital prototyping, which many of you in the manufacturing field have, have heard about uh, you know, Autodesk and, and, and our leadership in, in digital prototyping and how we can utilize inventor models as a basis for a digital prototyping strategy. And digital prototyping, of course, creates a single model. Hey, that sounds familiar maybe on the previous screen. Using the single digit model, users can design, visualize, and simulate. Hey, that all of that sounds familiar. So if BIM is uh, allowing architects, engineers, and con uh, construction folks to digitally visualize, simulate, and uh, deliver their product, uh, and digital prototyping is doing the same for manufacturing, well, what's going on in the middle here? Where are these two things converging? And, and where we see these two things converging primarily is in the building products and equipment space. So design, conceptualize, analyze, simulate, visualize uh, between the building design space and the building product and equipment space, where that's converging is right here in this industry. So as I see it, we have four key profiles. And we have folks that are happy to be 2D. Now, if you're, if you're, if you're use, utilizing 2D drafting as your means of communication to drive your entire production facility, maybe you're not drafting board, maybe you're more along the lines of something like AutoCAD LT, we have a, a solution for you to get to BIM. But secondly, maybe use some non-Autodesk products for manufacturing and production. Maybe using SolidWorks, uh, Pro Engineer, maybe Katia, Solid Edge is uh, e even playing in the space as well. And how do I take some of that data that I have from engineering and utilize some of the tools within the Autodesk platform to create BIM ready uh, uh, components and what's the difference between just providing them a SAT file versus providing them a, a a native BIM component and thirdly um, my favorite customers of course are those that are using Autodesk Inventor as the basis for their digital prototype and, and if you take a look at these first three profiles each one of those uh, are going to determine your path to BIM. So I have the technology available to me. Now how do I get my customers the BIM ready content they're asking for based upon one of these three profiles? And last but not least certainly is uh, is Autodesk Seek and, 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 and we're not going to go too deep in Autodesk Seek into this particular presentation um, but uh, certainly something to look at in, in terms of I have an entire product line um, I have an entire marketing initiative that I want to potentially find new potential clients um, by hosting my entire product line up to, say, Autodesk Seek so that somebody can download product specification and design information, whether that's Revit families or 2D DWGs or DXF, directly from a single source, and that source being Autodesk Seek. So, before we get too deep into how do I get to BIM, let's talk, uh, talk a little bit about the top attributes of quality BIM content from a, both a manufacturer's point of view and an architectural point of view, maybe a Revit user's point of view, but we'll start off with the manufacturing point of view. 
And the first thing we want to be aware of is that these things have to have an appropriate level of detail. If you've got an, a, a complete digital prototype, there's probably too much information in that model to simply hand off to an architect and say, here, use it. Uh, a, it's more information that he wants, and B, you may not want to give away some of your intellectual property. Uh, secondly, it has to have a small memory footprint. If your file being placed into a, uh, into a BIM model um, comprises one-third of the overall memory footprint of that project, they might not want to use your file. And then make sure that the model is in the proper orientation. Sometimes uh, when exchanging files between various 3D applications, when you bring that model in, it's actually laying on the side, and some people don't like that. Um, most people. I will go ahead and, and say all people don't like that. Uh, additional things you have to worry about is category and subcategory information. In Inventor or any other 3D uh, manufacturing application, um, those applications don't really concern themselves with whether you're modeling a window or a door. However, when you bring that information into a BIM model, into a Revit uh, project file, Revit does care if it's a door or a window. And it does care um, then when you go to extract, uh, say, material takeoffs or scheduling information directly from the model. It, it definitely is important as to make sure that your product is categorized correctly. Other things like metadata, uh, the weight, uh, the manufacturer, maybe uh, costs and those types of things also need to be included in that, in that BIM content. Connection points and uh, uh, connection placement are also extremely important when, you, when your product needs to integrate in with the, uh, with the uh, system and the infrastructure of the building. And then last but not least, it needs to be a simple exchange format. I want to be able from a manufacturing point of view to, to create one file that can be consumed by Revit Architecture, Revit Structure, Revit MEP, as well as the AutoCAD-based products, AutoCAD Architecture and AutoCAD MEP.